about working with the Rossville? I wrote a book called Chaos Gaia Eros, mm -hmm. and it was published in 1994. Mm -hmm. And then somebody interviewed me about the book, and the interview was published in a magazine mm -hmm. called The Yoga Journal. And Mrs. Ross took a yoga class somewhere, and she saw this magazine, and she read the interview, and she decided on the basis of that interview to get the book and to use the book in the Roth School. Mm -hmm. So she called me up and asked if I would help her with the curriculum for the Roth School. And that was, I think, in 1995. I came here for the first time. Mm -hmm. So what is your favorite thing about math? Oh, well, math is uh, it's beautiful beyond belief. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's the, the beauty, like as music is for some people, or painting for some people. Mm -hmm plays for some people, math is for me the most beautiful, uh, the most beautiful thing that humans have ever done is mathematics. Not only now, but starting with the earliest cultures, 100,000 years of doing beautiful things in mathematics. Mm -hmm. Also, it's kind of useful. Very. So for me, that's secondary mm -hmm. to the beauty. What is your favorite operation in math? Uh, right now, what I really, really like in mathematics is uh, drawing pictures of mathematics using computer graphics and animation. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make the beauty of mathematics that I told you about visible to other people, mm -hmm. because otherwise it's just going on in That's there. That's very interesting and very important. So how did you come up with the curriculum for the Ross School? Uh, well, I didn't exactly, but I participated in a team, and uh, the team made the curriculum. Um, to begin with, there was a first draft of the curriculum, and the team was a uh, mainly three people, Mrs. Ross, mm -hmm. Bill Thompson, and me. Mm -hmm. So the most important uh, contribution was Mrs. Ross. She had the idea of following world cultural history through the grades of the Ross curriculum. And uh, then Bill Thompson was added to the team because he could uh, embellish as a historian, he knew you know, enough information to fill out the curriculum with uh, details. Mm -hmm. And my role had mainly to do with the mathematics of the curriculum. The mathematics is based on a certain, mm -hmm. the, the curriculum is based on a mathematical model. Mm -hmm. And when you came up with the curriculum, how did you decide what grades would mm -hmm. study what? Yeah. Um, Pretty much we guessed. My kind of mathematics has, uh, understands the behavior of a complex system like a city or school, uh, goes along a kind of plateau for a while where things remain the same and then has a sudden jump. So world cultural history has these sudden jumps like the Civil War. World War II, the Renaissance. And um, in the development of a human, so a child or adult, uh, getting older, the psychological development also goes in these jumps, which have been studied by the education and psychology people for a hundred years. So what I wanted to do was to make a correspondence between those jumps known to historians, and those jumps known to psychologists, line them up mm -hmm. and put them between grades. So that's what we did. It was just an experiment. But it survived all these years without change.
That is very interesting. And what is your favorite part when you, or what, does it make you proud, or what feeling do you have when you see all of the kids working with the curriculum that you helped come up with? How do you feel? Well, it's thrilling. Mm -hmm. It's thrilling because the uh, students like it, the teachers like it. Of course, the students who didn't like it, they went away. And the teachers who didn't like it, they went away. <laughs> and the parents and the administrators and so the the most impressive thing for me is that even though the ones who like it were selected out of all the people when they graduated from the raw school and went to college they did very well so that's kind of a proof that our ideas are not bad and I think that it, I find it very interesting to see how the cultural history fits into every, all of the other subjects, especially reading and science and a little bit of library. I find that very interesting. And was that your idea to help make sure that it was in every single subject? Yes. It was? Uh, but not only me. Uh, we all agreed. So there are two basic principles of the Ross School curriculum. One is it goes along with the world cultural history. The math does, the science does, the art does, and so on. But it's an additional idea to try to integrate them. So when you choose uh, let's say in fourth grade you're doing the agricultural revolution, you're in Chatal Poyok and something like that, yes? Well, we're, right now we're working on the late Homo sapiens and we're seeing how, how their communities developed. Oh yes, okay, so are we in the Ice Age? A little bit after, when the Ice Age is now ending. Doni Vestonice? What? The first settlements, early communities. Not exactly. We were more at the time when the early humans, they were, part of them were in the, in the Ice Age, and part of them were in a drought in Africa. Oh, yes. And we're looking at who survived and who didn't. Okay. At that time, there was uh, mathematics that they did. There was science that they did. There were social practices, there was religion, which is shamanism. So these parallel strands, you study all of them in the same period. And I call that coordination. But to integrate them and to show the connections between all of these different things, that's called integration. So from the earliest days of the Ross School curriculum, now 16 years ago, these two different principles were, uh, were, were supported, were selected. That was our goal. Mm -hmm. And there is a, there's a reason for this idea, besides it makes sense, that we call the Sheldrake Principle. And the Sheldrake Principle says that when these subjects are taught in historical order and coordinated, and integrated, they're easier to learn. They're easier to learn. And therefore the whole educational process would be more successful. It was based on a curriculum which is coordinated historically and integrated. And when you see students study it and when you see them work with it, how how it goes along in their other subjects. Does it make you happy and excited? And does it make you feel that that, that it needs, that it should have more to do with it or less to do with it? Yes, I love it. It should uh, increase and it should spread to other schools. And it should also become a habit of life so something you do at home also. You see two different things, 
you connect them up. Mm -hmm. it, it actually is a habit of life that I do at my house. Oh, good. All I do so, is research. Also, what you eat, when you eat, how much sleep you get, everything integrated. And when, you, besides math, what are in, other important, like, what are your interests in, what are your favorite things to learn about besides math? Uh, well, obviously I'm an amateur historian and I love reading history. Not only a history of math, but history of science, history of art, history of music. And then I try to put them all together. So history is a, a subject which is, wants to be integrated. So that's one thing. Then I have to say um, that for me skiing is very important. And uh, and also music. Mm -hmm. And and when you find when you see how much the curriculum goes with all of the other subjects, it doesn't just make you feel proud. Does it also make you feel good or bad? Or do you, does it make you feel that you need to add less or m to take out less or add more to it to make it go into other subjects like word study, maybe vocabulary or... Yes, to see. good ideas. Mm -hmm. More and more. I see, how about making the school day a little longer? Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> <laughs> because there's only so much that can be stuffed into a day or, or a year. How much can you learn in the fourth grade? Do you think that there should be more? Well, what we're doing, well, I think that there should be more because what we're doing right now and we will probably do for a little bit longer is just a review of everything that we learned in third grade. But I think that oh, is yes. because I think that is important because then it will take us to the next step. Because last year we didn't learn about what we're currently learning about the after the ice age and who survived and who didn't. We didn't learn about that. We just stopped at the beginning of the ice age. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>